BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Physics and we're on the second part of the physics which is about materials and this video is about stiffness. Now this is pretty basic stuff but you really need to understand the basics before we can go on to uh, more trickier stuff later on. So make sure you understand this, this is important and it's about stiffness. Now, in the last video, we said what stiffness was. Stiffness is resistance to deformation. Okay, how stiff something is. Um, imagine this experiment, which hopefully you've, you did probably in year nine, uh, stretching a spring. If you apply a range of forces to a spring uh, by hanging weights on it, for example, and you measure its extension, delta x, they call it delta x for some reason. But uh, so F is the force. Delta x is the extension. That's how much it stretches. So it's length minus its original length is its extension. And you plot a graph of force against extension. Then I'm sure you know what it will look like. It will be a straight line. OK, up to a limit. As long as you don't go past what we call the elastic limit, then a force extension graph for a spring will be a straight line. In other words, it will obey Hooke's law. Hooke's law says that force is proportional to extension. So F equals K delta X, where K is a constant. Its extension is proportional to the applied force. Now, for a spring, or for a piece of wire, or for an object actually, K is the stiffness, it's the stiffness of the spring. In the case of a spring, you can also call it the spring constant. But if it's a piece of wire, for example, you would just call it the stiffness. So F equals KX, so the stiffness K is F over delta X, Newtons per meter. K is the stiffness newtons per meter. We'll do some sums later. Now, uh, if we stretch a wire, then as long as we don't go past the elastic limit, it will behave the same way. It will obey Hooke's law. And we can say what the stiffness of the wire is. Now, this is important. This is not the same as saying what the stiffness of a material is. You can't say what the stiffness of a material is in newtons per meter. Why? Well, the stiffness of a wire depends on its dimensions. It depends how long the wire is. The, the longer the wire, the less stiff it will be, the more it will extend. Uh, and it will depend on its cross-sectional area. The, the thicker the wire, then it will have a larger cross-sectional area and it will be stiffer. So saying what the stiffness of a wire is, is just for that particular wire. Yeah, the value of K is just for that particular wire. When it comes to a material, then we use something else. We use something called the Young's modulus, which I'm gonna talk about in the next video. And that takes the dimensions into account. The area under the graph is equal to the amount of work that we did stretching the wire. Now, uh, you remember work is force times distance. Well, if you like, if the, if the force to stretch the wire is F, then the average force is a half F, if the graph is a straight line. So a half F times the distance, it's a half F X. If the wire behaves elastically, in other words, if the wire returns to its original length, then this is elastic potential energy. This energy is stored in the wire as elastic potential energy or strain energy. And perhaps we can use it to do useful work later on, like uh, in a bow and arrow. You stretch it and then it stores elastic potential energy. You let go and it does useful work. So elastic potential energy or in this syllabus it calls it elastic strain energy, is a half F delta X. If we substitute for F, because F equals K delta X, 
then we get a half k delta x squared. So it's a half fx or a half kx squared is elastic potential energy for an elastic object such as a spring or a piece of wire where k is the stiffness. Here's a few sums. Um, if you want to have a go at them yourself, uh, and I will show you the answers in three, two, one. Okay, so the first one, the stiffness is 800 newtons per meter. How much will it extend when the load is 40 newtons? How much energy will it store? So F equals KX, so uh, X or delta X is F over K, which is 0 0.05, five centimeters. And then the EPE, I've used a half KX squared uh, and I get one joule. Uh, the spring in the shooter of a pinball machine needs a force of 30 newtons to compress it six centimeters. So its stiffness, K is F over delta X is 30 over 0 0.06. Be careful with the units here. It's gotta be newtons and meters. So 500 newtons per meter. <clears throat> Calculate the energy it will give to the ball. Well, assuming that is the same as the elastic potential energy, that's a half Fx I've used. I could have done a half Kx squared. It would have give, this, give the same answer. And that's 0.9 joules.